Chris, can I ask you what is your absolute beginner's percussive fingerstyle lesson? Now this is, again, presuming some people have got basic open chords down, but what would be the first way to add a bit of all this stuff that we see you doing to make the one man band thing? I think string percussion's the best place to absolutely string percussion, start. Okay. So by thinking percussively on the strings and that snare drum hit really. Going one, two, three, Four, then sort of working up to putting other stuff in. There's two different routes we can go. We can go down this sort of ornamentation, playing all over the guitar, just opening it up way. Or we can go down this one man band kind of way. But I definitely think that string snap for a snare drum is the place to start and any chord, but a safe E minor is always a great place for sure. demoing, isn't it? And just understanding within a basic strumming pattern of one, two, three, is going to work great as a foundation for what we're doing. However sort of advanced we are, just to understand the snare drum usually falls on two and four, so we can replace one, two, three, four. And the reason to sort of skip over that string slap is because I think most of us do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. when toddlers, you get to a certain level, you add it. Toddlers are great at it. They sort of come in and just go, there you go. Yeah. And I've had this in a million adult classes where you know, you're teaching guitar and I'm explaining the string slap and then everyone's overthinking it. But if you've worked with kids in this way that you're teaching it, then actually usually they're sort of doing the amazing percussive sounds already before they even go. So it's very intuitive. However, if we're overthinking it, which is something I do a lot anyway, we are just turning our wrists. For me, that relates directly to a downstroke. Yeah, always... down strum, up strum is this little twist of the wrist for sure. Especially when we get beyond the beginner level, it's more risky to be able to do the faster strumming. Now, the first thing that I saw you doing there, which I'm like, I know people will have questions about or that they should do, is you played an E minor chord and then did the slap on the thicker string so that we still got the other strings ringing out. This is something I remember when I was learning some John Mayer songs and I was like, how does he do that? Because it sounds like more than one guitar, mm. one man band thing. If you do the, the percussive hit or the string slap, on the thickest string or the thickest couple of strings, you can keep the other ones ringing out. So that's a top tip. Is there anything else on that side of things? Because again, it's the most applicable thing yeah. to whatever you play. I think top tips as well for that is trying not to change your hand shape because there's often a tendency to open a hand, for example, yeah. which obviously- Because you see people doing the ornaments and they're doing big motion, yeah. but that's because yeah. they're performers, I guess. It's not necessarily yeah. on the sound. You actually want to keep it as something that you can pull out at any point and therefore economy is right. So using the muscle, using whatever movement you're currently doing, but just yeah. dropping the thumb twist of the wrist. It also keeps in that fluidity of movement. If we're putting it on two and four, then usually we'd do a downstroke on two and four. So it's easy then to translate one, two, three, four as one, two, three, four. One, literally sort of millimeters difference to make that click. I think the biggest one out of the songs that we have written down to cover, I actually think Thinking Out Loud is probably the one that most people will have heard of. And on the original recording, even though it's electric guitar and live, you can hear that one, two, three, four, most clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether yeah. it's with a full stop or whether it is with this, keep it going. Would there be any other um, songs that you'd recommend as the first thing to try or any rhythms beyond just the basic four, four down strums? I think Extreme More Than Words gets, yeah, sure. gets used as a, as a real example. Something along those lines. Absolutely anyway. beautiful. I'm glad you're playing them as well. And that's um, thumb on the root note, first three fingers plucking, but you know, very blocky, not this kind of... I'd certainly stay away from the arpeggio based stuff if you haven't added this tap in. Treat it like a strum, treat it like a block. 
And yeah, thinking out loud more than words, great example. I, I, th I think actually just putting it into any other songs that we know anyway. Yeah, yeah. And I, re I really like that explanation that you're giving of treating it like a block, because it is, we're, we're going from somewhere where it's almost like classical finger style, where we've, where everything's coming from the fingers and it's yeah, all fine Yeah, I'd say I wouldn't put it in anything with a melody, for sure. They're the ones that are harder to learn, aren't they? If you enjoy this video, why not check out the full course available at andyguitar.co.uk. Get loads of lesson content that is not available on YouTube, but is structured and easy to follow. The link to that is in the description. Let's get back to the video. How would you then go, okay, I'm adding this percussive tap. I want to add a kick or a snare on yeah. the body of the guitar. Well, I think you call is... them belly beats, don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that term. Yeah, it's not a technical term. It's no. very technical. It's very inscriptive, right? Yeah, it body does, of the guitar. It yeah. does, it, yeah. yeah. It needs to come with a, a video explanation, though, I think. But yeah, I think this is a crossroads, man, basically. So we go down complete one-man band, or do we go down this ornamentation way? Because we bring in that kick drum sound. But actually, that that is tricky. That's one of the most notoriously hard places to go. I think it's well worth learning and that is simply holding that simple way of holding our arm up and our wrist straight mm -hmm. but then doing the ridiculously uh, complex movement of just bringing our wrist down but then leaving fingers and elbow in the same place. So it's sort of kinking in, okay, so it's kinking um, down. Which, I mean, I say that's really complex, but... It's but it is well keeping a blocky yeah. rhythm going. If I was at it, again, the tap, is more like a down strum. This is it. It's, this it's isn't. Wrist. This is very. Uh, and is this the first place you would do it? Because there's different places we can do kick and yeah, snare. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Because the simple reason being that we can do it at the same time as other stuff. The fact that it's not a turning the wrist motion makes it so hard. There's no yeah. other place that you do that motion mm. in guitar. It's actually nice to sort of start by doing it like this and, and starting super, super gentle as well. Yeah, so yeah, tension is just gonna make you hurt and... Um, yeah, tension is the enemy. Guitar as well. yeah, yeah, tension is the enemy, I like that. The idea then is taking a super, super simple chord sequence again of one chord, originally going one, two, three, four, then we can start thinking about putting the kick drum on one and three and of course that means that we're trying to do something at the same time okay and now so, we're going to combination of stuff okay yeah, go for it yeah. again it's just super alien in guitar so we need to sort of have in our minds that we're coming out of movements that we would usually do okay so rather than a usual downstroke we would turn our wrist we now want to bring the heel of our hand against the body of the guitar whilst flicking our fingers out so we end up like this i'll let you demo first before i try so we end up with So as you recommended, I'm going to do this a couple of times first because it's alien to me. Totally, totally. And then... I get, just getting that timing together... Yeah, as it, one. That takes time. That re it really just takes time. And I think it's important to just sort of let it go for a little bit. Do you know sure, what I mean? Let sure. it be a bit ropey and have a bit of a, a difference in timing. Um, and it's more important to try and try and relax and make that comfortable just because it's it's nuances right so what would the rhythm that we would get that in then well just put it into the, the most simplistic of um just playing the kick drum on one and three and the snare on two and four so one two three four one two three and then we can just start to sort of build it up to or putting in upstrokes in between Again, we then start to have to think about changing the way we move. So we're starting to think about upstrokes with fingers. It can get pretty tricky in the sense that we're shifting outside of the idea of, of wrist movements. But if you can nail those two motions and start to be able to do kick drum sounds at the same time, you can open up things like taking like the Tiger, for example, of like quite quite quickly to be it's quite fair. so cool play that a couple of times man <laughs> let people hear it because i heard you warming up with it and i was like yes so so all that's happening is a kick and the snare on a one two three four and then i'm just playing the power chords as you would if you learn it normally start to maybe bring in some it's not 
not so tricky to go from in many to ways here. it's a lot more than the sum of its parts but it sounds fantastic i mean if anybody's wondering why did i get chris woods down today why aren't i doing this that's why because it's not just i can get the basics of that kind of thing down and they add a lot of percussive stuff like i can't not add percussive stuff in a lot of stuff if i'm doing stuck in the middle with you which i teach a lot the original, not too much percussion in it. If I'm playing it, I'm adding a two and four in there because mm. I want to be that one man band if I haven't got mm. a drummer. But the, the step to add the extra bits, I mean, you say it's not a lot, but I'm not, I'm not comfortable in that realm. So I'm like, just a little bit of it of these accents. I'm like a guitar wizard, man. And I would, I'm, I'm excited to learn it myself and I hope other people are too. You also added a decorative one there. That was the one where I went, oh wow. And that is something we don't normally see. I mean, open mic night, you're gonna see a lot of strumming. You're gonna see uh, some people better at singing, some people not. You're not gonna see an awful lot of that unless it's a very good open mic night, for example. So show us, a, show us a little bit of that and give us a window into that more decorative. The sort of where I did this at the end, right? Do you treat it like a drum fill, something like that? Or like a... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Flurry? I think so. I, I tend to try and... So th this is the other route away from yeah. one man band. But you combine them then and it's very effective. Just the sprinkling of the other one is very effective. Mm. So that one, for example, as well, you mentioned like scratching of the guitar and stuff as well. It can be, you know, this isn't one that would work well with that. But that little run you did seemed like people could um, have a window. Uh, yeah, let's see what I actually did. So I, I can see. break it down, man. Um, so. Take, take it okay, so all that's happening is a motion on the scratch plate and it obviously doesn't have to be on the scratch plate it could be with fingertips on the body of the guitar but it's just a one two three okay um and then we're bringing in a fret hand tap as well which is a real i don't know it kind of it, it, it looks flashy and i mean where this became famous i think is from angie mckee's drifting sure and this moving across the body but actually when you start to do this it becomes quite fluid because it feels like if you've ever played any percussion at all or you know classic drumming on um, the dashboard of your car where, where the most brilliant percussion happens yeah, course, you know yeah, tapping, and, tapping. and it's, it's between those movements of the fingers but also bringing in a, a right and a left hand so i'm just going one two three and then i'm bringing this hand over here to the, the shoulder of the guitar i guess and then bringing in a string slap as well um, Okay, it feels like you're stepping away from the one band band thing as well because you're not trying to do anything simultaneously. Yeah, it's actually a break from playing yeah. and, a, and a fill. That's why I saw it like a fill because a drummer would break away from the basic beat, stop playing that and play something else instead. Mm. Whereas most of the time with percussive finger style, we're trying to do a kick drum and a strum. Yeah. So go on and teach me it. To see if you can teach me it in a, this in a percussive short space movement. of time. Just that one, one flurry. So going ring middle and index on the yeah the sort of front of the guitar so i try and spread them out a little bit yeah so they're so that we hear one then the other Love, beautiful beautiful and then i'm an expert dashboard tapper on the <laughs> exactly exactly all those hours paid off and then yeah fret hand is then coming to tap the shoulder of the guitar now interestingly I, the top is fine too as well and if you've got a cut but i guess if you're going to be underneath there's nothing in the way right yeah well this is this is interesting because if we go back to andy mckee's drifting he's doing it over the top and he's playing mm. over the top then yeah so sometimes there's mechanical reasons but one two three and then tap and then string slap that's it so i reckon <laughs> one two three tap and then that yeah so I, I think which is hard to i can find that anytime no problem but as soon as i do that as well it kind of goes well i think let that da. yeah let that da. it's kind yeah. of also letting the motion continue because you're you're moving your wrist this way aren't you so we're going one two three thumb so keeping the heel of the hand up i would say you kind of keep your fingers down when you do it as well. Yeah. Because I really want to lift it. Because you want to be in. You don't uh, want. Beautiful. You don't want that sound too often, do you? Mm. You, you want to be in control. So. Hey. Suddenly, my string stuck. So I, th I think it's trying to keep that heel of the hand up. 
Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why you need a teacher, guys. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> there you go. That's amazing. I really wouldn't have spotted that with... Um... Yeah, so... I can see how... Yeah. I, I mean, it's getting into those little <laughs> sort of detailed sounds as well, because I think there's a tendency when we're when we're hitting stuff or on the guitar to think, okay, well, I just I just hit it there. But actually, the the, the hours I've spent, and this is sadly revealing about how I've spent a lot of my life. But you know, I've spent a lot of time trying to make that sound good, that sound good, that just sound that good, one, that yeah. sound good. You know, that, that's the hidden stuff that people don't normally see, and that's mm. the thing that um, that's why I like to bring people like yourself down, so we get that because we don't normally see it in an edited. 10 minute YouTube video where the guy's practiced it for two hours and then practiced it all his adult life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all you see is, it's as easy as that, guys. And I really want to show people that window in. And it was very illuminating to say that we've got this more one man band thing that you can perhaps add, well, see it more like adding more of a percussive drum beat mm. to what we're strumming, to what you're picking or, picking or strumming. But then also there's this more Flam well, how did you describe it? I'd say flamboyant, all these drum fills. How did you describe it? I think them? I said ornamentation. Ornamentation, absolutely. Right. I mean, even, even just adding that can be an ornament, but this very much felt like, yeah, more flamboyant or ornamentation that seeing them separately and working on them separately is going to be key and knowing, knowing that there's two schools. Otherwise, mm. you can do one and then you wonder why you're not crossing your arms and, and playing like we see some of, some of the pros like yourself do. If you enjoy this video, why not check out the full course available at andyguitar.co.uk. Get loads of lesson content that is not available on YouTube, but is structured and easy to follow. The link to that is in the description.